let's talk about uh, the pilot, Adam. Can you, can you speak to just a little bit about who he was and what his personality was like? Oh, he was a very high energy gentleman. Uh, he was an accomplished pilot. Uh, he had been been a pilot for many years, uh, held a commercial rating, and uh, was active all the time. He was just a, a high energy personality that seemed to love everybody, and everybody loved Adam. Now, you sort of spoke to that when you answered the question, but why is it that you hold Adam in such high regard as a professional pilot in a professional pilot capacity? I would say that his dedication, his dedication to his uh, his piloting and, and helping out the community that he, he served. He was into the skydiving community and he was a skydiver himself. Uh, his forte was being able to jump out with American flag. He was a retired Marine and he was, he was very patriotic and that was his joy to bring in like a 4th of July American flag and, and fly some smoke canisters on his heels and such like that. Gotcha. Um, the, uh, I believe he was with two other jump instructors. Yes. Um, what were they doing here at the airport yesterday? Uh, they were, or, it was on Sunday. Sunday. Uh, Sorry. They had been uh, contracted out to come service the Skydive Mountain City uh, organization here. And so they were contract to come up here and jump uh, Skydive Mountain City's customers. And they all had a wonderful day. They got plenty of jumps in. The weather was great. And at the end of the day, when uh, they were headed on the way home, uh, apparently they encountered some bad weather on the way in there. It happens with us pilots once in a while. But I didn't really know the what's called tandem instructors. Uh, they they, they kind of come and go out here at a pretty regular basis, so I didn't get to know them. But Adam had been coming back and forth from here for about three years, and that's how I got to know him as a fellow pilot and fellow mechanic. Uh, what is it, you know, you, you spoke to about the weather. What is it about bad weather that can make flying a small prop plane like that dangerous? Well, uh, the lack of visual outside references. Uh, when clouds and, and weather gets in the way, you can lose your sense of what way is up and what way is down. Uh, there are instrument training and instruments in the aircraft that will allow you to fly with instruments. Normally you would call in, a, well, all the times you would call in a uh, instrument flight plan so that you're in communication with air traffic control at all times. They're watching you on the weather and they're basically following you as you fly along in com constant communication. Visual flight rules, none of those apply. Uh, you can just take off and as long as you can see out of the plane, you can see reference to the ground, you know which way is up and down because you can look outside. Um, and you don't have the lack of visibility. So there are minimums requirements that the FAA sets forth the, that determines whether it's an instrument condition or a visual condition. When he took off that evening, it was visual conditions here, but it was instrument conditions at the destination. Uh, I guess why and, and maybe how has Mountain City become a skydiving destination? Well, uh, there's a, uh, a lady that uh, used to live down in Raleigh, North Carolina, that has a couple children that are going to Appalachian State University, and that got her into the area, and she wanted to start a skydiving operation. She has <clears throat> federal grant assurances dictate that any federally funded airport has to accept any aviation related businesses to operate at their field. So when she showed up here and told me she wanted to start a skydiving operation, then she had the right to do so. 
And so she started uh, Mountain City Skydiving like two and a half years or so ago. Uh, is the, the program's become pretty popular, hasn't it? Yes, yes it has. The, for small little mountain city to have a skydiving operation is kind of unusual. Uh, normally you find skydiving operations around big uh, population hubs, uh, uh, large cities normally. Uh, last question I have for you. Um, you, you. You spoke to this yesterday when I called you and you, you gave me a statement, but if you could just reiterate those those feelings of condolences for for those folks' as family. Oh, of course. Uh, I knew Adam throughout the years, uh, not very well, but just when he uh, occasionally stopped in here. I didn't know the Tatum instructors, but they were two young gentlemen uh, from what I've read on social media that they were super people. And I know Adam was just a great guy, a great personality. And the tragedy that they experienced a couple nights ago uh, has just ripped everybody's heart out around here. And uh, there's, there's really no words that you can say that would take back that loss. Um, it was just a tragic accident is what it really came down to. And I wish the families all the condolences and, and hope that they can find some kind of peace. You know, it sounds from the way you're talking, uh, like you, you didn't know Adam super well, but you knew him. Correct, you yes. Were, you were... There are, there are more that knew him a lot better that worked on him for a daily, daily basis. I got, I got his pleasure out here a few times a year. It sounds like the, the airport, the pilots, the people who work in this industry are kind of a family. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're all kindred spirits. Uh, birds of the same feather, I guess you could say. Uh, pilots uh, come in here and we treat them like brothers whether we know them or not because we're all birds of the same feather.